Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to looking at creating a parametric brick such as this Lego brick. So Patreon has asked me to help with a project and this is the start of this project just to get a parametric brick up and running. Now if we look at the free CAD wiki you'll find a tutorial on there of using a part design process to create a Lego brick. So that's already there. This is a bit different in that we can use the spreadsheet to drive our Lego brick to whatever size we want. And because this is on the Lattice 2 workbench, this is super fast. This is also a solid. So we're looking here, we've got the fuse compound. So if I do a, something like a cut or union with this, then this will actually take and we can actually change these parameters and still have the union there been absolutely fine behind there. It is to the right scale as what you'll see with commercial bricks, so this should be compatible. And it has the tubes, the nubs, and the studs in there. And these can be fully changed as well. So we can change something like the wall diameter to three. And when that takes effect, you can see we've got a thicker wall there. And we've got nub height as well, which we can change parameters as the stud diameter. So we can change that as well. And the tube diameters as well. So the tube that's inside, we can change these as well. So it's fully parametric. And we've built it in a way that bypasses the topological naming issues. And we'll explain how this is all put together over two videos. So the first video is actually building this shape without Lattice 2 and get into the point where we're going to install the Lattice 2 workbench. And then the next video we'll actually install the Lattice 2 workbench and then add the necessary repeats and the linear arrays to create the end result. Now both those videos will be up on the channel when you come to watch this one and I'll leave a link below and at the end of the video so you can carry on into the next part. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Let's have a look at this. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So before we go ahead, let's look at the technical drawing I've put together for the universal brick or the Lego brick. If you look down at the spreadsheet, which I've included, you can see a number of variables here. We've got units of length, width and height. So when I say four, I'm taking it on the four studs. So if it's a four by two, it's four studs by two. The height units are to do with the vertical height here. And if we look down, we've got the horizontal spacing and vertical spacing. Now you can see the horizontal spacing here is eight. So between the centers of those studs, the vertical spacing is going this way. So this vertical spacing here. So three millimeters will be the shortest block that we can create. And from those calculations, we get our length, width and height. So these here are timesed by these variables. So the length, times the horizontal spacing will give us our length here, the same with the width. But you'll notice that you'll see some length adjustment here. And these are taken into account with these as well. Now the reason why the length adjustment is there is because we need these bricks to actually be placed together. If we didn't have the length adjustment, then when we come to place these in an assembly or on a board, with the nubs there, they won't actually fit properly. So that's a small length adjustment just to take off a little amount to allow them to fit correctly. Let's start by getting the basic length, width and height into our model. Now this is where we come down to the workflows. If we look at the FreeCAD wiki, you'll notice that they already have a Lego brick workflow there. But this is for a single brick that doesn't require a spreadsheet. So it's a single size brick. It's also missing the nubs at the bottom and it's not driven by a spreadsheet. So it's not parametric to that point where we can change the size, the unit size and have as many bricks as we want. 
Now, if we look at this workflow, it's using the part design workflow. And it's more or less what we would follow, but there is one problem with this workflow in that we get to something called a multi-transform. Now, what the multi-transform allows you to do is transform, say, if we had this stud here as a single stud, and we transform this way by four, and then take that four and transform along the vertical. So we've gone horizontal and then along the vertical to make this section here. So it's basically two linear patterns. We will have a problem with that because when we come to create our single block with just one tube in, the two by two block, we can't have a linear transform of zero in the part design. It just doesn't make sense. There's no point in doing it. Therefore, we have to find another type of workflow to follow. Also, linear transforms and arraying operations in the part design at the time of speaking are not as fast as, say, the draft array. It's because the draft array has link array elements that are much more optimized for this workflow. And you'll notice when we start using a spreadsheet, say, with the part workbench workflow, that will get a slowdown when we start increasing those arrays. I've opted into using a part workflow with Lattice 2 Workbench. Now Lattice 2 allows you to create repeating patterns with ease and is much more optimized. So we can repeat those at speed. So going back to our technical drawing, we're gonna first start getting in the values into our spreadsheet, just the ones that we need to create our first part of our model. So let's come over to FreeCAD. And create a new document and I've got the axis cross already visible if you can't see it come out to view and toggle axis cross and I'm going to enter the sketcher and we're going to make our first sketch we can create a new sketch along the XY plane and we're going to place in a rectangle I can use the centered rectangle and place this in and take this point, the center point, and the center point of our scene. Axis cross is getting in the way there, but you can see that's been highlighted in green, that center point there. And we'll make that coincident to that center point. I'm gonna place some height and width in here now. So I'm gonna click on this one, place a width. At the moment, we can see it's 162. Let's look back at our technical drawing. We're just going to get the basic length and width in there just to get ourselves into the correct scale for our project so we've got 31.8 and 15.8 for the time being i'm just going to put 31 in here and a height of 15. we're going to fill this in from the spreadsheet in a moment now we've got ourselves zoomed at the correct scale so we won't have any surprises when we start adding this spreadsheet and laying down our first sketch. It's nice to get ourselves centered and understand the dimensions of the project just with one of the sketches before we start. So the first sketch is down. I'm going to come over to the spreadsheet workbench and I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet using the create spreadsheet icon or spreadsheet create spreadsheet. If you haven't used spreadsheets before, they're very simple to use. We've got our rows and cells, and we've got this one here, which is very important. This is the aliasing, so we can alias up our fields and reference them in our sketch. Let's start by getting some labels in here so we understand what these values are. So the first one I'm going to put in here is the units. So we've got length unit, or units, height units, and a width units. We also got the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing. We can pull these columns out so we can see these labels here. From these values that are going to be placed in here, we can then derive the length, width, and height. So I'm going to use this column and place in here length, height, and width. 
The basic units we're using are four, three, and two. As you can see here, these are to do with the studs. So we've got four by two, so the length and the width. We'll add those in to our spreadsheet. And also we've got the horizontal spacing and vertical spacing. These are of a single brick. So we're looking at a brick with only one stud. So this is the smallest brick we can have. The horizontal spacing is eight millimeters and the vertical spacing is three. The actual vertical spacing of a single brick is something like 9.3 or something around that. But we're just going to go for the vertical spacing of three for the time being. Next, we'll use these to calculate our length, width and height. I'm going to alias up these fields. Now, by using the alias, this gives us a label to reference these fields by. If I wanted to use this field at the moment, I would have to use B1, which is not very descriptive for our needs. I'm going to use the labels this side. I'm going to copy them and click on the value, come up to alias, paste the value in, so length units, you can type it in there if you want and hit enter. Now when we move off, you can see that's highlighted in yellow. If I click on that, you can see we've got the AS in there. Let's do it for the rest. You can see this one hasn't taken. That's because I've forgotten to press enter on the keyboard. Let's try that one again. Now we've got all our values aliased up. We can use the formula to calculate this length. To do that, I'm going to reference the length units. So I'm going to click on this field, come up to content and place equals length units and then times using the asterisks for the times and then we want horizontal spacing. As you notice, as we start to type it, horizontal spacing comes up. Let's hit enter. We get 32. Let's do the same for the height. Place in equals, height units, times vertical spacing. And last of all, the width equals width units. Now you can see we can do it in the column as well times and this one will be horizontal spacing as well because they're both the same value hit enter and we got 16. looking back at our technical drawing you can see there's a difference between the length and the width in that they've been minus by 0 0.20 millimeters this allows for lego bricks to be placed together without any overlap so you can see this length adjustment here let's add that to the equation Let's add the length adjustment, 0.2 millimeters, and alias this up, making sure we select the value and then add the alias and hit enter. Now we can adjust our values. So looking at the length minus the length adjustment. Hit enter and we have our value. Need to do the same for the width. You can see we've got a problem there and that's because we've added a V on the end. Hit enter and there we go. So when it highlights in red, we've got an error in the cell and we need to look back probably made a typo that can be easy rectified there the height doesn't need adjustment that's fine left at nine so we've got our base dimensions already in here I'm going to save this and call it parametric brick we have our base dimensions now let's start modeling so we're going to come over to the FreeCAD document I've already got this first sketch in here I'm going to double click it and I'm going to add those parameters 
to this sketch. Our length, double click that, using the little formula button on the end to add an expression in the formula editor. If I start typing spreadsheet with a capital S, you'll see the spreadsheet come up. Then I can start typing the length LE and we've got our length adjustments and length units in there. We have still to add the actual length. So you can see that won't be visible until we air this, this up. We could use the field, which is D1, and we get a 31.8. That's one option. If I hit OK, you can see it's gone orange. That means it's referenced to an external source. Let's close that and alias up those spreadsheets. So the length here, I list this to length, the height, make sure we select the value, and this one is the width. These will now be available in our sketch. So going back to our sketch and changing our formula, deleting D1 and typing in length, you'll see it here. And this one as spreadsheet dot width. Now we've got our two expressions in there for the formulas. Let's hit close. And that extrude this over in the part workbench. So using the part workbench, we click on the sketch and use the extrude. We've already selected the sketch. So you'll see the sketch selected here. And we need to add a value along the length. At the moment it's 10. From here, we can't set the formula. So if I hit OK, what we can do after this has been extruded is click on the extrude and then you can get to the length forward by clicking on the field on the data tab and using the formula editor there to add your expression. So I'm going to type in spreadsheet dot height and hit OK. I'm going to click off. This will adjust. We just created the first part of our brick. It's important to know at this point that if we change the spreadsheet to say units of two with a width of two and come back, note the brick has changed, but we still got the same amount of faces. This is important because we're gonna be using this as reference to stop the topological naming issues. So when we create new sketches, we'll be referencing this extrude rather than the drum tree or the operations that the next sketches create. So we always have a reference to something where the amount of faces and the edges don't change. We'll explain this in a moment when we come to it. Next thing I'm going to do is flip this round to the bottom. We can see the bottom here. I'm going to select the bottom and I'm going to add a thickness to this. Now the thickness will hollow out the object. Come up to part and come down to the thickness, which is here. You'll see it on the toolbar here as well. Now look at the thickness. It's actually gone outwards and we have these curved sides here. So you come into the thickness, you can see it's one millimeter here. If we change this to minus one, you can see this has gone inwards. And this is what we want. We've got nice sharp sides, and this is the way we want to go. We need to come and leave a certain width in here for the walls. Let's hit OK and leave that thickness here. Let's come back to our spreadsheet, and we're going to add another column and call this wall. Let's alias up this field to wall. Now we can't alias this field up at the moment with wall because what will happen when I hit enter and move off, you see there's nothing in there and it doesn't take it as an alias. If I put a zero in here and change this to wall, 
and hit enter. Then that will take it. So let's alias up correctly now. Let's go back to our technical drawing. We can see our wall is 1.2 and that's the same all the way around. And we can see it here, 1.20. Let's add that in. So wall as 1.2. And now we can go back to our model. Click on the thickness, either double click it or we can add it in from the view down here, the data tab and using this value here. Let's do it by double clicking using the formula editor and type in a spreadsheet with the dot wall. If I hit OK, it's going to go outwards. So what we need to do is go inwards. To do that, just click on that button on the end and move to the beginning and just put the minus sign in front of that and hit OK. That's pushed that thickness inwards. Hit OK. And we've got the starts of our Lego brick. We can now start adding the studs on here. Now, one thing to think about is that our thickness isn't really going to change in the amount of faces and edges either. So we've got face here and a face inside. So this won't change. Any actions after will have a change there. So we can use that top face with no problems at all because we change the size in the spreadsheet we're going to get the same amount of edges and faces as we've got at the moment, no matter what size it is. So I'm going to click that top face there of that thickness. Let's come over to the sketcher and we'll create a sketch upon there. So make sure that's selected, that top face. New sketch is going to be mapped flat face to that top. Hit OK. This is where the problem can start if we have changing faces because I'm going to reference this point here by pulling in the geometry using the external geometry tool also available from Sketch. Sketch geometries, external geometry if you don't have it in your toolbar. And this will allow me to pull in that vertex of so this one here. If you pull in the line, it doesn't matter. We just need one vertex to reference everything against. I'm going to create one single stud on there using the circle and we create a circle let's come in and with that circle we're going to set it some distance away from here and that will be described in our technical drawing if we look down this is described as the corner gap so 3.9 as the corner gap we also got the stud diameter here so this is all to do with that stud let's come back to our spreadsheet hit close on our sketch Come over to the spreadsheet and let's start adding those values. So in here, I may want to call this something a bit different. So stud placement. That's 3.9. And also we have the stud diameter, which was 4.8. Whilst we're here, let's add some more dimensions to the stud. So we need stud height, and that's 1.8. Let's alias these up. Now these are all in our spreadsheet, let's add them to our model. Let's come back over and come back into the sketch. Let's first add the placement using these two points, vertical constraint and spreadsheet, start placement. We do the same for the horizontal constraint, this point and this point. And finally, the diameter. Using the formula editor, spreadsheet, start diameter. We've got our stud in there, or well, the sketch of our stud. And if we look at the top, bring this around.
and at a bit of angle, you can see our sketch is in there. We need to take that sketch and using the parts workbench, we need to extrude it. So make sure it's selected and extrude that sketch. We're going to go along as 10 for now, hit OK, come back into that extrude and we'll alter the length forward on the data tab to take in account in the spreadsheet. So spreadsheet dot start height. Remember this is case sensitive. So if you can't see them in there, then it's down to the casing you've placed in. And we've got our stud height there. These are two separate objects. We'll fusion these together after we've created the model. Make sure you save as you go. And now we're gonna add the fillet to this. Because this is a repeating pattern and it's normally advised for fillets to be added last, then it's safe to actually add the fillet to this because we'd be filleting a changing edge. So with this one, we only have one edge to fill it. If we had five here, then we would have five edges. So it's best to fill it this now and let the lattice or the repeating process take care of the rest. Click that edge, circle that edge, and come up to the part and fill it. And we can add a radius of one millimeter there. It's a bit too much. So click on the fillet. If we look, you can see we don't have any fillet properties for the length we've just filleted. So this will be needed to be done as just a literal value. So 0 0.5, we can't actually reference this in our spreadsheet. If we was in the part design, then we could. So we've got our fillet of 0 0.5 there. And we have our first feature that we need to repeat. The feature is sitting on a face, so our base is the extrude 0, 1, which we come into the extrude, and we can see the base is sketch 0, 0, 1. If we come into that and click on that sketch, this is attached to the thickness. This one here, changing the extrude underneath changes the size of our thickness but it doesn't add those extra faces. So we are safe. For the next stage, I'm gonna be using the Lattice 2 workbench. So in part two of the video, we'll look at installing Lattice 2 workbench and finishing our model. Now that video is already up on my channel and you'll find a link here. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.